what's up guys and gals this is Roy from Roy's Customs and today I have put my transmission back together and only so that I can take it apart now the thing is is when I tore it apart the first time and I seen all the carnage that was in there um, there was some part pieces that weren't really uh, like savable but um, this transmission more than likely can't be rebuilt anyways uh, so I'm going to use it for a little demo on how to pull it apart and kind of go through stuff with you like I said there's a couple of pins that I didn't have because I don't know where in the world they went they might have been swept up or something but uh, anyways I'll show you where they go and I'll tell you what they are so that you and I'll even uh, give you uh, pointers on how to get the roll pins out and stuff so I'm gonna bring you in a little closer and uh, we're gonna go through this we're gonna pull it apart together and that way you can see how to tear apart the manual transmission so this is actually a Ford Escort ZX2 G5M transmission so but most of them are relatively basically the same not all of them are, and, and I'm not saying and not all of them are like this. Some of them have like a full casing and then no end cap. And anyways, the point is, is I'm gonna I'm gonna go through the procedure here on tearing it tearing it down. Um, but I'm probably not gonna make a video of putting it back together because all you'd really have to do is reverse this procedure and put it back together and lay it out like you took it apart. Uh, the first thing you're going to want to do, uh, you're going to notice that on your end cap, there's nine um, 10 millimeter bolts. Uh, so like I say, I just slap this back together so, um, so that number one, I'd be able to know how it went back together because I'm going to actually do a few things with a different transmission whenever I get it, get another one and get it all, uh, get back to work and stuff and get some money saved up and I'm gonna do a little bit of a, a build on a transmission so, so that it'll be a little stronger, a little better. Probably even gonna order up a, a limited slip differential for it. So this will actually kind of show you and help you with on how to at least pull it apart if if you have something like that in mind if you're going to do some kind of a limited slip differential or something or or if you just got to repair it um, because sometimes some of them can be rebuilt some of them can be repaired but this one probably not reverse is completely thrashed and i'll show you the casing as well on the inside here after i get it pulled apart and i'll uh so this would actually be um stuck and then you would want to find a place to pry it at to pop it off but you pull the end cap off and then you can set it kind of to the side now, back here in this piece here, there is a roll pin, and what you're going to want to do is, okay, what you're going to want to do is, you're going to want to take a hammer, just any old hammer, and get a punch. Um, this is actually a nail set, I believe, but get a small punch, and you put it down in there, and the roll pin will have resistance, but what you do is you tap it on through and it will come out the back side so once you get it punched through far enough then this will be loose from the shaft and so once you get that popped through um, then this will be this will be free but um, anyways you have these lock nuts on here on the uh, end of your shaft and these ones are one and a quarter 
and you'll need a half inch drive to to uh, look well you'll also need your little uh, punch or whatever for there's little locks as you can see there's yeah. little locks and you can see where this isn't even well it isn't even tightened down but it'll be locked and you'll take your punch or whatever and you'll knock that out or you'll knock the punch out and then you'll be able to take that off there okay so what we have now that we have that part taken care of what we do is we take the nuts off of the end of the shaft make sure you lay out your parts like kind of in order as to how you took them apart so and try to keep this all together so that whenever you pull this out you can pull it out in one kind of solid motion you'll have to do some wiggling but it will come out take it out all in one piece and that way you can just set it all in one piece all together and then your other gear this is fifth gear by the way and then your other gear will come off and notice how it's shaped notice how this is shaped this uh, edge this uh, this protruding piece goes down so whenever you put that back together don't put it like this make sure you put it like you brought it out just like you took it out okay so now that that part is done um, number one this is pretty cleaned up compared to what others will be and what it was when I first tore it apart so anyways um, what we have is these 14 millimeter bolts down here there's there's 15 14 millimeter bolts around here now two of them actually hold your uh, rear um, your engine damper uh, bracket so those those are actually part of your engine damper bracket so once you take your engine damper bracket off I tightened that a little more than I thought. Anyways, you'll want to take your engine damper off too. Or the bracket, anyways. So you'll have your engine damper bracket because of the way it actually mounts to the transmission. So there you have that. You can set it off to the side with your end cap. And the whoops, hold on it. Okay, so once you got all your 14 millimeter bolts out, then you'll have to do um, a little something before you actually pull the casing off. There's this little bolt right here, and I've already got it loose. Obviously, I didn't even tighten it all the way up, but this actually holds reverse into place, and you'll wanna take that out before you can even pull the case off but there's also one more thing and yes I already got this loose too you need to pull this little bugger right here out and then there is a spring and a ball bearing down in there so you'll want to take those out with a little magnet 
Okay, so now that you have that much done, um, you're going to want to find a good spot to pry this with like a flat screwdriver or with a flat screwdriver. Um, there is not really a, de well, there is kind of a designated spot for that. I will bring you in and show you that. You see this right here? I'll even get a flat screwdriver and show you. What you do is you take and you put the screwdriver like so and you pry it apart. That is your pry point. Okay? So, and you may actually have to fight with your case a little bit more after that. But more than likely not. I mean, once it's popped loose, there is a couple of other spots that you can actually pry up. Try up from over here. There's a good spot there to pry. Maybe pry from, well, this direction. So, anyways, once you have that pried apart to where you can pull it apart and you have your reverse gear loose, loosened up, well, taken out, then you can. It'll never come up that easy, but like I said, I threw this back together so that I could show you how to take it apart. So, anyways, once you have the casing off, you'll see this crazy looking stuff going on right here. It looks weird. What kind of wizardry and witchcraft is that? Anyways, um, so what you want to do here is there are a few things you need to do first. First, you need to, you can kind of lift up the shaft and pull that out. Because there's actually a little lever there that goes into that groove. And what you do is you pull the shaft up and you pull it up far enough you can kind of pull that out. And that's the first gear you pull out of there. Like I say, you want to kind of keep stuff organized so that you know kind of how it goes back together. And so anyways, there's also this 10 millimeter bolt here, which mine is already loose, but you'll want to take a wrench and you'll want to loosen this up. You can pull it all the way out just remember that it goes back in there and you can go ahead and you can pull this shaft out and you can also pull out this little lever here. Now that you've gotten that far um, there is one thing that I'm going to want to kind of show you here uh, pretty, uh, pretty closely. Um, and I have to explain to you how this works. First of all, there's actually a ball bearing that goes down in here in the shaft. And it's, it's in there. And the... Uh, not not only is the ball bearing in there, but the spring is in there too. There's a spring and a ball bearing. And what you'll want to do is you'll want to hold that with a pick before you actually pull this cotter key. And if you can see the cotter key, it's a roll pin, roll pin, my bad. So you see this roll pin. Now this holds this shaft in. Now... Um, I just pulled one, I just pulled it out with a pair of pliers, a pair of channel locks, 
it took some doing but once you pull the rope in well your your pick should stay in there because there will actually be pressure on it but you see once once you get that once you get that roll pin out there is a pin here then that comes out it should just slide right out it goes in this little hole right here it just slides right out it holds this pin in um, which hold on which also you want to push that pin out a little bit so you can try and get to it but it was very difficult to do to even put it back in so um, you'll need to get into it you need to get that pin out so I'm gonna put this back on the stand here while I work on that So I'm going to go ahead and keep explaining what's going on here. So once you have that little pin out, and if you can get a hold of that, in order to get it out with, then you can go ahead and pull this out and take the little selector uh, I'm not sure what this is called but you can take this out once you get that out just make sure you remember how it goes back together it actually goes in like if the bell housing is if everything's sitting like this and the bell housing is facing that direction it goes just like that down in there um, but it's kind of a no-brainer because uh, there's a ball on the uh, shifter lever and there's a ball on the selector shaft so you it'll only go in there one way anyways so now that that's done what we're kind of wanting to do here is lift this up enough that we can get this shaft out now being you'll have your pick in there the ball shouldn't go shooting out but if it does fall out, it'll end up either in the bottom of the case or it'll end up in that hole. But that's okay because you can use your little magnet to retrieve it. Just make sure you don't forget it. Mine won't even come out because that, that little pin is jacked up somehow. So you can either take this apart this way and just set your rack off to the side or some people actually pull the whole thing out but you don't necessarily have to now when you're taking this first shaft out you gotta remember your your differential is actually kind of snug but there will be enough room if you pull this up some and you can kind of wiggle it out And then this shaft will just pull straight out. This is actually the main shaft, which, as you can see, the splines for your clutch. So, anyhow, once you get that done, you can actually pull your diff out because it'll just come straight out now. Just pull it straight out. It's not pinned or locked in there in any way shape or form it just sits there there's two bearings you have bearing caps for for the bearings and then the bearings are on the shaft now there's if you want to take this lever off then you pull that pin that we pulled the roll pin out of um, as a general rule you're not going to need to take this much stuff out 
you know, in order to just fix something. But if you're completely rebuilding it, you know, you might want to inspect all the parts and stuff and make sure, you know, you're in bearing caps, you know. Um, and there's this little plastic piece down inside here. For whatever reason, I'm not sure if it's some kind of a capper or if it's a guide or something. But uh, it's in there. And so there you have that. That's kind of pretty basic to tear this thing apart. And uh, if you pay attention to what you're doing tearing it apart, putting it back together really isn't that difficult. Um, but you kind of want to keep this rack all together. It's just kind of easier to deal with, with it being completely together. Uh, those are actually your, um, your selector uh, shafts, the selector guides, because this will up and down to select your gears. So anyways, and that's, and that's what helps select your gears whenever it pulls up and pulls down so anyways you have this other portion of your selector which is just two bolts basically a 10 millimeter and I think a 12 millimeter and you pull it out and you won't probably ever have to take that out even though I did because I wanted to tear the whole thing apart and then on the end of your shifter lever there is As you can uh, see, there is a 10 millimeter bolt here that you take off and this piece just comes right off. But there's the two, this is part of your selector. As you can see, it's in a, it's in a standard H pattern. So, and that is what your shifter lever actually rides in to kind of select the gears. Um, so you probably won't ever have to take that apart but uh, anyways uh, that's pretty much it and then this is this has got some kind of a grease fitting or something underneath here or some kind of a fitting I'm not really sure but obviously it, it's like a filler tube like thing or something and this would put it right directly onto the gears whatever it is whether it's grease or oil or whatever it is because I've never had one of these off I don't know if I would even want to take it off but anyhow that is oh by the way um, that that bearing in that spring is pretty important because it actually sets down in those little holes and it actually has puts pressure on it and it helps it run as you're running through the gears it, it helps with selecting the gears and it helps it run through the gears so and this is actually what lifts reverse up that reverse gear you can see that there's this little spot that it rides in there that's why I say you can it's relatively easy to get it down in there and then as you can see there's that hole there that that bolt was in you, you whenever you go to put this back together you want to make sure that this thing is pointing at least close to the direction of the bolt hole now make sure that it doesn't move around a lot and stuff and that way when you get the casing back on you know you can you can use your pick and you know try to try to get it centered up pretty good and then put your bolt in through the casing um so so that's pretty much it it's yours might take longer to take apart but this gives you an idea of how to take your uh, g5m uh, transmission apart um you know they use them in all kinds of stuff uh escorts escort gts um uh, like uh protege actually uses a, a g5m there there's like just several different 
um, vehicles that actually uses this. This is basically uh, a Mazda transmission anyways. So anyways, there you go. I hope you learned something and I I hope I didn't miss anything. Um, like I say, whenever you take fifth gear off, leave it all in one rack, pull it off, and set it to the side all together. That way, nothing, unless that's what you're replacing. And then you will have to pull it apart piece by piece systematically so that you know how to put the new one back together. Um, but other than that, I think that is it. That is all I really kind of need to show you, actually. So, um, you know, so some of the stuff is actually easier than other stuff, but I think you guys can handle it. If you're even halfway mechanically inclined, um, you can do it. Uh, so, anyways, there's also this magnet here. This catches like any little shards or whatever. Um, but you want to pull this out and actually inspect it. I, I cleaned mine all up, but but if it has like big chunks on it, then you you're gonna have to rebuild your transmission anyways because it probably doesn't have much longer with big shards. But if it has little bitty, just little bitty like dust, then you're usually all right. That's normal wear and tear. That's pretty normal stuff, but if you got big pieces and big chunks and stuff stuck to your magnet, then you you probably ought to just, you know, either get a new transmission or rebuild it or what have you. But uh, anyways, I kind of wanted to show you also some of the, uh, some of the problems that this transmission actually has. Um, you can't really, really see it, I know, but there's there's actually all kinds of cracks and fractures and stuff down in here. Um, there's some pretty good size cracks here along this part. Um, and on the outside, I think it's the other piece of the casing that actually has some pretty worn out, pretty bad cracks. Yeah, you can see how it's just really bad cracked on the outside of the casing. Um, and then on the inside, you can see it's pretty bad cracked up in there too. And in this portion right here, right down in there, it's really bad cracked. Uh, I know you probably can't see it, but it's it didn't have much time left. It was it was about at its end anyway, so I mean if somebody wanted to rebuild this so they would have a temporary transmission, they they could waste their money and their time doing that. But uh anyways as you can see the bearing caps down in there. Um uh whenever you rebuild your transmission you'll want to pull those out and there's actually a tool you can get to do that with, but I don't have it but uh there is one in which you can do that with so anyways um i just wanted to show you that real quick i want to thank you guys and gals for watching um i appreciate it um like and subscribe and uh hit the notifications so that you can see more videos along the way um because like i say i do all kinds of stuff if it goes in on under over or even around a vehicle um, I've probably messed with it at least a few times in my life anyways uh, thank you guys um, have a spectacular day or night whichever one it is for you peace out